I am Dr. Pai Lee, uh, the Senior Consultant in Obstetrics and Gynecology at Rajagiri Hospital, Alua. Kerala is always proud that our maternal death rate or ratio, as we call it, is much better than that of the rest of the country. And Option Kerala is quoted as a model in this respect. But we obstetricians working in the state feel that we haven't achieved our potential in this regard. We could bring it down actually much more than what we have achieved so far. We have probably about 250 maternal deaths in the state a year. We monitor the obstetric society, the Kerala Federation of Obstetrics and Gynecology has a wing monitoring this and on the basis of that we know what exactly are the causes of maternal death and the circumstances that lead to the death. Our statistics by the Family Health Survey as of 2012-13 it is 66 maternal deaths per 1 lakh deliveries. That's about 3 year old statistics so we feel that probably it would have come down to about 50 per 100,000 deliveries. Still it is much more than what it should be because studying these deaths we know that there are many maternal deaths which could be avoided. This is a system that was started in the United Kingdom more than 60 years ago. What they realized was that if there is any punishment attached to any investigation of a maternal death, the truth will not come out. So the conventional style of inquiry when a mishap occurs was try to find out the cause, the culprit and give the punishment. The, in other words, find out who did something wrong and punish them. This sort of an approach will make everybody involved hide facts and will not know the real truth. So in the UK, actually in 1952, they decided that the practicing clinicians, obstetricians, should audit each maternal death, concealing the identity of the patient, the hospital or the treating doctor, get the findings, put all of them together and then identify what are the causes of maternal death in their states. They call it Confidential Inquiry into Maternal Death, CEMD, the first country in the world to start it. Later on, Australia started it, Malaysia has followed, when South Africa started, they got their independence, they started. But this can be done only in a place where the deliveries take place in the institutions because we need to have the records to analyze and find out. This is not possible in many parts of our country, but Kerala fortunately has a very high incidence of institutional deliveries. In fact, we have almost 100% institutional deliveries except the way very odd ones. So we have records and we can go through those records, anonymize them and then identify the facts. WHO realized this and in a meeting in Delhi in 2003 for the Southeast Asian countries, we were also participating in that. It was decided that Kerala can try out the Confidential Review of Maternal Deaths and that is how we started it. The principle is there is no names identified, no blame attached, no punishment given. So that we hope that the real truth will come out. But it is not easy to do that because anonymization is not always possible, especially in a small state like this. The other thing is whenever bureaucracy or government is involved, the culture is that they have to identify a culprit and punish them. So we have to detach it from the routine departmental inquiries. So the Kerala Federation of Obstetrics and Gynecology volunteered to do that and government permitted us to do it issued orders that all the maternal deaths should be reported to us. So that is how we have been doing it. We found that the common causes of maternal deaths were rather repetitive. The most common is blood loss or hemorrhage associated with delivery, either prior to delivery, during delivery or after delivery. So this was the most common cause, accounting for about 20% of the maternal deaths 
unfortunately that is still continuing. The second commonest cause that we found was hypertension related maternal deaths. People developing something like fits because of the high blood pressure and we call it eclampsia and dying as a result of the various complications that can occur. This high blood pressure can also lead to brain hemorrhage. So our aim was to address these two causes which are the most common ones. But then there are other causes and for example there is the infection or sepsis. There is the unusual condition peculiar to labor that is called amniotic fluid embolism where what we mean is that the fluid surrounding the baby inside the uterus may sometimes get into the maternal circulation into the blood vessels in the mother and that can cause a sudden shock like syndrome and unless action is taken immediately the mother out of that shock will go in for further cardiac arrest bleeding and death very serious condition all over the world and in centers where they have facilities to resuscitate them immediately they are improving the results but a severe case has a very bad prognosis all over the world even now so that is another cause that we found then of course there are uh, other rather less common causes at that time but something which is increasing in our state is what is called pulmonary embolism where blood clots from the red, from the blood vessels in the lower limb or in the pelvis move on to the lungs and cause severe breathlessness what is called pulmonary embolism and as a death as a result death occurs so these are the some of the common causes if you take the rest of the country for them abortion was a major contributor fortunately for us in kerala it is not a major contributor to maternal deaths the most common uh, the, or the serious problem that we face is that we don't get the records properly. When we get them, they are not properly maintained. This is the most common challenge that we find. A lot of effort is required actually to do this type of an audit. The uh, obstetricians and non-obstetricians are involved because many of them may have conditions which are not obstetric in nature. So we have been able to get voluntary help from obstetricians, senior obstetricians all over the state and also non-obstetricians like cardiologist, neurologist, anesthetist, gastroenterologist, uh, nephrologist, all these people are there to help. We have in fact a big voluntary body to do this analy analysis and help us. But unfortunately, case records are not promptly sent to us and even when we get them, many of them lack details. That's the biggest challenge we face. The way forward is, of course, the profession as a whole has to tighten its grip. The government has to be a little more insistent. And the third problem that I find is, even though we have published our findings, what are the defects, where this has happened, the sufficient backup or support to prevent that from recurring. In other words, the response has been poor. And for that response to occur, government has to step in. Government has to insist that this and this has to be a standard of care. Unfortunately, we don't find that coming uh, very much. And there are a lot of inadequacies in the service that we provide, both in the government as well as in the private. So unless there's an improvement in the standard of care we provide, we cannot improve on the situation that is there. I ideally, once we identify the problems or the lacunae, there should be immediately steps taken to prevent that. In some conditions, we may not be able to know the cause of death. So there should be a provision for doing autopsy in such cases. At the moment, it is very seldom done. We know that there is deficiency in the services, both in the government and in the private setup. Private setup, it is very much with the management. But with the government setup, unless the government steps in, nothing can be done. One of the commonest deficiency that we find especially in the peripheral hospitals, lack of manpower. Not enough doctors, obstetricians, not enough anesthetists especially, not enough nurses to give round the clock cover. So because of that, there are problems happening which unfortunately 
because of its consequences that can happen, we always cannot tell in that particular case this happened like that. But we know this is happening. And unless there is support from the part of the government, nothing much can be done.